What's going on everybody? This episode we are going to learn the basic JSON structure as well as understanding objects inside of JavaScript. So JSON and objects in JavaScript are very similar. JSON actually means JavaScript object notation. There's just some minor differences and we're going to talk about what you need to know in this episode. This video is sponsored by Filestack which allows for easy image integration into your applications with on the fly transformations and filters so I can go in here and change images. So if you need this kind of capability or want to give this kind of capability to your users, file stack could be the way to go. Here are some other things you can do such as resizing images using just a URL change and responsively resizing images. If you're interested, check them out. I'll drop a link down below. So let's go ahead and talk about JSON real quick. Now you may hear this pronounced JSON or JSON, either one, no big deal. But it's basically a way to describe data. It's an agreed upon format for data and it'll allow us to easily communicate between applications through our API. So you can think of the API as the means in which we communicate between applications and then JSON is kind of like the chosen language to communicate between applications. If you're speaking JSON and I'm reading JSON, it's very easy to communicate. So I'm using this website, JSON Lint, which is one of my favorite sites for quickly validating JSON, and make sure you got it right. So in here, you can go and create an object with curly braces, and it's going to be key value pairs inside of quotes. For example, name, and then a colon, and then some value such as Caleb Curry. And if you want to have multiple attributes in here, you will want to have a comma after the first one and any of the other ones before your final one. So we'll go ahead and give us just some example data such as the industry we are in. And let's say we are in the music industry. Now we can check to see if this is correct JSON, hitting this button validate JSON, and it says valid JSON. So far so good. If we messed it up, such as forgetting a comma, we're not gonna get the same result and it's going to show us where that error is. I'm kind of zoomed in so it's hard to see everything, but that will help us to correct our JSON and find any errors that we may have. Now, another important thing is this needs to be double quotes. So if we use single quotes, it's not going to work either. So let's go ahead and replace those back with double quotes. If we want to have nested data, we can do that as well. For example, we could have a favorite colors and this is going to look similar to these others but instead of just having a value it's going to use square brackets and inside of the square brackets we can have multiple values so these values could be objects themselves or they could just be strings or even numbers so let's go ahead and make an example with some strings we'll say red blue and green and let's go ahead and go through another example where we might have favorite numbers. In this situation, we're also going to make this an array. However, we're not going to use quotes. So we can just say five, three, and seven. Let's hit validate JSON, make sure everything's good. Valid JSON, cool. Now let's go ahead and create one more example uh, just to show some nested objects. So we'll say favorite people, and this will be an array. And Inside of here, we can have multiple objects. So curly braces to define an object, and we can define whatever attributes we want in here, such as their name, and we'll just say mom, and then relationship, maybe uh, parent. And then if we wanna have another object in here, we can put a comma after that object, and go in here and say name, dad and this will be relationship parent as well so that's just an example of nested objects we hit validate json and it's still valid json so we can do something pretty similar inside a javascript and this is very similar to a javascript object however when we're defining an object in code we do not need quotes and generally i'm going to recommend that you don't put spaces in your property names so instead of having spaces you could say something like favorite numbers using camel case favorite colors and favorite people. So you could take this entire thing if you wanted and bring that over to your code. And what we'll do is we'll just say const JSON and assign it this value and end it with a semicolon after the curly brace. Now, if we scroll down, 
inside of any of these, we could actually send that data to the user. So instead of saying hello world here, we could say, for example, have an object and we'll say data and the value for that is just going to be the JSON data that we created up here. So let me just make sure I got that named right. Yep, looks good. And that should do it. So we will save. Now when you get the data, we should see that data right here. And you can see it's already formatted nice for us. You could also select it as raw if you don't want the formatting there. Now you could, in theory, access just one attribute on this object. So for example, we could say dot favorite people. Saving this and giving it a run will now just get that data that we asked for. This is one of the reasons I personally like to not have any spaces in the attributes whenever possible. Let's say, for example, we did have a space in this attribute. Well, then the way we would have to access this is now using square brackets and then quotes like so. And now we can have a space in here. And we just say data with space just so we can see that change here. We'll hit send and you can see it works the same way but it's not as friendly in the JavaScript syntax. So if you can keep everything the same, it's going to be a lot easier. So if instead we just didn't use quotes at all here and did not have a space, we should be able to just use the dot operator like so, removing that space as well. And we'll put this back to just data. All right, cool, so that works. So you can see we don't actually need quotes in the properties for the objects in JavaScript at all. So we could in theory go up here and remove all of these quotes and everything should work exactly the same way. But instead of going through in here and updating everything, what I wanna do is I actually just want to go through an example of creating a list of people. So let's go ahead and kind of start fresh here. So we'll say const people and I'm going to remove this and we'll just start with an empty object. And inside of this object, actually, I take that back. Instead of an object, let's go ahead and define this as an array. Since there's going to be multiple people here, and then we could just have a few objects in here. So it'll look something like this. I'm just making the general structure. We could have three people. And then inside of each person, we can give it multiple attributes. We'll just go with a name and an industry as an example. Let's say this is for a list of customers. So the first one can be Caleb. Industry was in the music industry. That's the first customer. Let's go in and define the second customer here. Name is John and their industry is let's say networking. And then lastly, we'll have one down here. Let's say this person's name is Sal. And her industry could be, I don't know, sports medicine, whatever. And then down here where we have data, we could change this to be more descriptive, such as customers. We also want to update this value here to be correct, which will be customers. Now let's go ahead and try this out. All right, there we go. We got all of our customers. One last thing is often you will have this data accessed at an endpoint such as slash API slash customers, where basically we say, hey, we're using an API and this is the resource we're trying to grab. But if we send this now, it's not going to work. What we could do is we could actually customize what URL the person needs to access in order for it to work here. So instead of slash here, we could have slash API slash customers. And if you wanted, you could still have just a general slash for the home page, so we'll say app.get. And inside of here, we will just have a very basic example just to say welcome. So we'll define a function here, define the request and the response, and then we'll say response.send, and we'll just send a string saying welcome. So now API slash customer should work and the home page should work as well. So we try that, that works. And then if we just visited the localhost 3000 without anything, we get welcome. Cool, so we created some mock data. This is a great way to just become more familiar with data and sending and receiving data, but it's obviously not going to be dynamic or update in any way. It's just hard coded in the software. Not something you're going to do very often, except for when you're building out the application.
as you can tell, we kind of isolate different pieces and get each section working. So when we have mock data, we can be sure our API endpoints are working and there's not some problem connecting to the database. Then we can add the database later and make sure we can replace our mock data with real data. Instead of doing everything all at once when you're learning, sometimes it's easier to split it up into different categories like that. If you're more experienced, you might be able to just go in here and do multiple things at once, but this being a beginner course and us building up from scratch, it makes a little bit of sense to use mock data. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned for the next episode, and I will see you then. Peace out.